Hey guys, this is Valentina, your local Argentinian Spanish tutor. Welcome back to another video where I give you the best tips and tricks to perfect your Spanish and help you sound like a real native speaker. Before we get started, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and turn your notifications on so you don't miss any of our content. Remember, we post weekly content about Spanish vocabulary, culture, grammar, pronunciation, and so much more. Also, don't forget to follow us on all our social media. Spanish is a diverse language. There are dozens of variations of the language within it. And today I want to talk to you about one of them in specific, the Rio Platense Spanish, spoken in Argentina and Uruguay, two neighbor countries in South America separated by the Rio de la Plata, the widest river in the world. So with no further ado, let's get on with the video. of Spanish carries that name because it's mostly spoken around the river's basin. Because Argentina is such a large country, that doesn't necessarily imply that all Argentinians speak this variation of Spanish. It's mostly associated to those who live in Buenos Aires. Uruguay, on the other hand, being a far smaller country, speaks mostly this variation. The Rio Platense Spanish is the product of the influence of both European immigration and Spanish colonization and the indigenous cultures of the south of the continent. The Rio Platense Spanish is very unique and has a ton of characteristics that set it apart. But this also means that it's less comprehensible for other Spanish speakers and even more so for those who don't speak Spanish at all. So today I thought I'd share with you some of these characteristics as an Argentinian myself. Number one. In the first place, we have to talk about voceo. Although the voceo isn't exclusively from Argentina and Uruguay, these two countries are the only ones that use it almost exclusively. And what is voceo? This is the replacement of the personal pronoun tú, which means you, with vos. This does not only change the pronoun itself, but also all its verbal conjugations. It actually simplifies them. For example, tú quieres with voceo becomes vos querés, you want. Or another significant difference you may hear when using voceo is with the verb ser, the permanent state of the verb to be, which using tú would become tú eres, you are. And with voceo it becomes vos Sos. Also notice how with voceo, verbs are emphasized towards the end of the word with an accent mark. So for example, tú hablas becomes vos hablas, tú comes becomes vos comes. In my personal experience, half of my family is from Uruguay and the other half and myself are from Argentina and we've always exclusively used vos, but of course, this can vary from family to family and person to person. Like I said, Argentina and Uruguay aren't the only countries that use voceo, but they are the ones that use it the most. In Argentina, the voceo is perfectly acceptable in all formal situations, whether that is in your job or in school, and it has no negative connotations. Number two, yeísmo reilado. Yeísmo is a phenomenon that takes place in many Spanish-speaking countries. It's what happens when we don't separate or distinguish between the sounds of the Y and what used to be called the double L or two L's next to each other. As I'm sure you know, there are two ways of pronouncing these sounds in Spanish. Take in, for example, the word rain. You can either say lluvia or lluvia. So, when Spanish speakers pronounce both of these sounds the same, that is called yeismo. But what is reilado? This is when Rio Platense Spanish makes an appearance. The third possibility is pronouncing these two sounds as a sh, like the English word share. 
This is something Argentinians and Uruguayans do all the time. Not only we don't separate the sounds of Y and double L, we pronounce them as SH. So for example, my name is Valentina, yo me llamo Valentina, with my accent would sound like yo me llamo Valentina. And number three, another characteristic of the Rio Platense Spanish is the huge amount of words taken from the Italian language due to the immigration of Italians to these two countries in the early 20th century. Some examples that we use every day are pibe and piba, which means boy and girl or guy and girl, facha, to be good looking, fiaca, to be tired, gamba, which means leg, or laburo, which means work. Okay guys, and that's it for today's video. Feel free to leave a comment down below and share with me your experience with Rio Platense Spanish. Have you heard of it? Do you know anybody who speaks Rio Platense Spanish? What's the thing that surprised you the most? Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and turn your notifications on so you don't miss any of our content. Don't forget to check out OCTV's website and submit to your first free demo lesson and start your journey towards Spanish. You can have personalized lessons and one-on-one -on -one conversations with native Spanish speakers from all over Latin America like me. And what better way to learn? Don't forget to follow us on all our social media and stay tuned for our next videos. And I'll see you there. Nos vemos. Mwah.